Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. This week I'm going to delve a little into one of my favourite topics that have odd time signatures and I'm going to give you some tips that will hopefully make them a little easier to cope with. If you've not been over to TalkingBase.net then go check it out. You'll find all the downloadable lesson material for all my videos uh, over there at the lesson map and that's along with all the other lessons in a cool categorised order so you can work through certain topics at your own pace. Also, join up as a free member to gain access to uh, all the other exclusive resources like the practice room, the forum, the courses page and loads more. So it's expanding all the time, so go check it out. Now, for this lesson, I'm going to be focusing on a pretty straightforward time signature of 5-4. Although, all the tips that I'm going to be giving you do work for any other time signature. Uh, and I'll be releasing a more in-depth uh, course on our time signatures and polyrhythms at uh, some point, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, this should be a good little practical exercise for you. So, there are several different musical situations where you might encounter odd time signatures. The most common and most simple scenario is where you're playing a pre-written line or riff uh, round and round, like this. Now, this is fairly easy to cope with because it's just a case of learning the notes and then playing them as written. If it's just a note every beat, like that riff that I just played in 7-8, it's really easy because you don't even have to think of any rhythms. You just think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But a much tougher situation is where you've got to work around a chord progression or improvise a solo in an odd time signature with no written lines at all. So you just have to work around the time and the feel in a natural sense as you would in good old 4-4. Four, four. Now, one of the keys to learning a new time signature like 5-4, and uh, most importantly getting a natural feel for it, is to pay attention to the main accents in the bar. One of the worst ways that you can go about uh, gaining a feel for a time signature is just by constantly counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's important to be able to do that, as we're going to do in a minute, but um, it's much more important to get a feel for the general phrases. For instance, if I was in 4-4 four, four, and there was a groove with a, a bass line like this, I wouldn't feel that groove by thinking 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm more likely to get a feel for those accents there, that That little hiccup there makes all the difference and that's how you'd feel the phrase. In the same way, if you're going to be uh, feeling something like 5-4 and it's something like this, again, there's the phrase. So that's what we're going to be working towards. So the beat that we're going to use for this lesson is a straight 5-4 beat based on Vinnie Colaiuta's playing on Sting's Seven Days. It's a really common way of feeling 5-4 and uh, you might recognise it as a straight version of the feel from the Jazz Standard Take 5. So here's the beat. Okay. So, first of all, let's just get our bearings by just counting along with that beat, okay? So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, remember that this uh, beat's available to download over at TalkingBass.net, so uh, just follow the link in the information below. And if you're at TalkingBass.net, just click that download button, okay? So, um, here's the beat again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you have any problems with, uh, with counting this, just listen to the drum beat. So we'll, we'll take apart the anatomy of it of there. So um, we've got a bass drum on beat 1, obviously. Okay, so listen out 1, 1. Then we've got 1 on the and of 2, so we've got 1, 2, and, 1, 2, and. One, two, M. So we've got this bam, 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 bam. We've got a choke on the hi hat on the end of two there as well. And then we've got a cross stick on beat four. Da, da, click. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that cross stick's on four. Okay? So we've got three main accents in there. We've got the two bass drum hits and then that cross stick. Bump, bump, click. 
bum, bum, click, bum, bum, click, bum, bum, click. So that's the phrase that we're listening for. So just listen out for those three accents. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bum, bum, click. Bum, bum, click. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So, like I said, download the beat and first of all, just try counting along just so you can get your bearings and then you can move on. So that's the anatomy of the drum beat and you can now count a basic five through the beat. So now let's see how it's subdivided. Now any odd time signature can be broken up into combinations of twos and threes. And this version of 5-4 is broken up into three and a two. Okay, and the reason for that is uh, because we've got that little, um, that little accent on the off beat there, on the end of two. And that goes across the middle of that three. So you wouldn't be able to put a two there, but it'll make more sense when you try counting along. So we have one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. And I want you to really accent the ones there. So we have one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. And uh, yep, we'll try it with the beat. One, two, three, one, two. 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 If we tried counting two and a three, see how it feels. Two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Doesn't work because of that little choke in the bass drum there, the accent. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Back to three. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. And you can really hear that accent on the four where the cross stick is. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's where the two is. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Okay? And it's worth bearing this in mind, this subdivisions of twos and threes, because it really makes a big difference to the, uh, to the feel and how you're going to feel it and how you're going to count it. If you, were some, if, if you were trying to work out a, a beat of 5-4, you know, you're transcribing something and you just can't get it, sometimes it can be because of little odd accents like that. So you might need to be thinking of a 3 and a 2 rather than a 2 and a 3. So you might be just counting 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 and thinking, oh, it just doesn't feel right. When if you just turned it around and tried 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 with the accent different, all of a sudden it'll make more sense. So, not saying that's always gonna be the problem, that being 11.8, but you know, that's, uh, that's a little tip there, you know. So now we can count one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, one, two, but it still takes a lot of thinking to keep that up consistently through a tune. It still doesn't feel natural, and you can't switch off at all. It's, it's more like a counting exercise than music. So uh, here's the big tip that makes it all a lot easier. We're just gonna count the phrase, or feel the phrase, which is gonna be made up of the accents and, uh, and a little more working around those accents. So first of all, here's the beat. And uh, the main accents, we've got three main accents. Bum, 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 bum. One, two, three. One, two, three. And uh, the phrase that we're gonna use is gonna have another, uh, another hit on the beat five, okay? So we're gonna have this. Bum, 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 bum. That's the phrase. So no counting. I'm not, there's no one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, one, two. We've just got bum, 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 bum. We're feeling the phrase, the accents there, okay? And the good thing about this particular phrase is that we've got four notes. So it's a little bit like counting four, four but the second note's just a little bit more syncopated. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And also, because it's not this incessant one, two, three, four, five, you know, this kind of industrial beat of one, two, three, four, five, it's got more, more of a swing and a pulse to it because of this one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four. It already feels a little bit more musical because we've got this phrase, okay? So, uh, yeah, so first of all, that's what you want to try counting, just, or just feeling. You just want to try and hear that while you're um, listening to the beat. 
So now let's attach some bass notes to that rhythm. So this is going to be in C minor over a C minor 7 chord, implied C minor 7 chord, and uh, we'll start on a C. So the first two notes there are going to be a C. So, or either way. So we've got C there, and then those last two notes, so we've got four notes to take care of, the second two notes are going to be uh, coming back to the C. We're going to lead it back into the C. Just as it, when you listen to that phrase, bum, 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 the bum, bum, as it comes back in, really does lead back into the, into the first beat. So uh, we'll do that using a G and a B flat. Okay, so G, third fret of the E string, B flat, first fret of the A string. So we've got C there, third fret of the A string. that's all we've got. C, C, G, B flat. Simple. So now let's try it with the drum beat. And you're probably worth counting yourself in with this. One, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice that we can that some of those notes I've played more staccato or you know um, shorter, and some of them I've played a little longer. You can vary this; doesn't really matter. Um, there, I'm uh, holding on the second note to kind of reinforce that choke and the uh, the accent there. So, but uh, you could play them more staccato or short. which gets a little bit more spiky, uh, a la Mission Impossible, which, as you might have noticed, this is very similar to. So, um, there I'm holding on the, uh, the last two notes as well. If they were shorter, here it's a little bit more uh, tense, a little more agitated and spiky when you play them shorter. So that's an important thing to uh, remember with any bass line. You know, whether you hold or you know hold the notes or play them staccato will make a big difference to the groove. So just a little tip there <laughs> as, as an aside. Uh, so yeah, so and you want to be able to play it away from the beat and with the beat. So just practice that and get that under your fingers first. So the main thing to take from that first riff is the fact that we're not counting. You know, there's no one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, any of that stuff. We're just feeling that groove, that phrase there, you know, the main accents in there. And we're just feeling it. Bum, 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 you know, and that's the first step. Now, some people do still have problems with this when they first start uh, playing it because of that little syncopated hiccup. And uh, if you're not used to these little syncopated grooves, um, that can throw you off a little. If you're used to playing funk stuff, or especially if you're used to playing like 16th note grooves, stuff like that, this probably won't seem that difficult. But if you're used to more straight stuff, it, uh, it might cause problems. Now, if you have any problems, one thing you can do, even though I'm gonna be covering this a little more later in the lesson, is subdivide right down to the eighth notes. Um, so uh, with this, what we actually have is, if we, if we count a little slower, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, we actually have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So you can hear where I'm clicking there. Bam, 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 bam. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Now, I know that, you know, we've been trying to get away from counting, you know, and now we're back into like super counting territory, but to just get it under your fingers at first, it can help to actually count that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're hitting on the ones of each of those. So one, two, three, one, two, very slow. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And once, once you've got your head around that, you can actually stop counting and just think bat da da bat da da bat da bat da bat. You know, just any kind of vocalizations or any kind of, 
you know, anything in your head, really, just to think, bad, da, bad, da, 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 bad, da, bad, da, da, bad, da, da. just feeling that eighth note pulse, da, da, bad, da, da. and feeling where those accents are there, bad, da, da, bad, da, da, bad, da, bad, da, bad, da, da, bad, 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 you know, sometimes it can really help to suddenly, uh, you know, to start subdividing. So now all we need to do is work on some more variations on the phrase so we can develop some independence. And that will help with uh, allowing us to work more freely around the time without worrying about what beat we might be on or, you know, sticking rigidly to this bump, 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 bump phrase. So um, we'll add some notes first and we'll add them into the last two hits. So I'm going to refer to this um, this this phrase, this riff, in terms of the hits. So we've got bam, 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 bam. We've got four hits. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're going to add them to those last two hits. So it's going to be the four and five and. So it'll make more sense when you start playing them. So first of all, here's the beat. And I'll just play the, uh, you know, our original groove. So I've added a note there onto the G when we've come down there. So we've got ba ba bam 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 ba ba bam 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 ba ba bam. So we've just added a note in there. So an eighth note. Okay, so just get used to working around that and maybe go between the two. Original. So now, let's add a note onto the last of the hits. So it's going to be on the B flat, and that'll sound like this. Okay, so now let's go between the two. So we'll play the, uh, the two hits on the G, and then the two hits on the B flat. So now what we can do is add notes onto both of those hits. So we'll play two Gs and two B flats, okay? Okay, so now let's go through all of those variations. So we'll start with the original, then we'll play the two hits on the G, then on the B flat, and then both combined, okay? And we'll play four each. So now let's try the same method of adding some notes into there, but we'll do it with the first two hits, okay? And as you'll remember, when I talked about the subdivision of the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, we've got two sets of three there, okay? So the ones that we've just done were the twos, you know, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. So now we're on to the threes. So what we've got to do for the C, the first hit, is that we'll play three Cs. So we have... Okay, so you're really getting to hear that three subdivision there, which might actually help with feeling it. So um, that's the first one, and then the second one is going to be on the second uh, on the second hit. So we've got, and that one can be a little bit trickier to uh, to feel at, at first. So when you do that, try subdividing the first beat and then just you know play the notes on the second one. Okay, so we've got one, two, three. Bam, bam, bam.
Okay, so again, first one. Okay, and then obviously we can combine them. So we could have. Okay, so that's all of them. So let's try those along with the drum beat. So four on each. One, two, three, four, five. So now we can combine the subdivisions of those first two hits with the subdivisions of the second two hits. So uh, we'll start with the, you know, the uh, subdivisions on that first hit and then go through the combination. So we would have... Or... Or, or the combination of all the two at the end. then obviously we can turn it around and do the same with the, uh, co the subdivisions of the second two hits. So, oh. or all of them. Or we could play all of the subdivisions, okay? So we would have... Okay, so that's pretty much all of the different little subdivisions taken care of, but keeping that same groove working, because, you know, there's loads of different ways that you could combine subdivisions of each beat, but what we're doing is working around that phrase. So we've got that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're not looking at, you know, subdivisions of beat two and then beat three, it's subdivisions of that phrase, okay? And that helps to kind of reinforce that feeling of it and gain independence uh, over it because we don't want to be stuck with that rigid, strict groove. We want to start being able to add notes, take them, uh, take them away, etc. So just try working through those first of all. So now let's try taking out some notes. And there's a lot of different variations on this, but we'll just try a few examples. So um, let's try with the drum beat. So first of all, just the original groove. Now we're going to take out the fourth hit. Okay, so we're going to take out the B flat and just hold that G. Okay, now let's try taking out the G. So this is the uh, third hit. Okay, or we can take out the second hit. Now let's try taking out the first hit, okay. Try taking out the second, uh, the first and the second. Let's just try keeping in the fourth hit, okay, the B flat. Okay, so. You know, some of that seems a little bit extreme to be taking out those notes, but all we're doing is, is trying variations on the phrase, just so that we can get used to all the different ways that you could play it. But the most important thing, and the biggest tip I can give you for actually nailing those variations, is to keep that phrase going in your head, or in your, you know, just feel it in your body. You want that bam, bam, dum, dum, bam, 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 bam. No counting, just that phrase. You want to feel that, and then, you know, if you can keep that going, 
you can just place notes wherever you want in there. So as I was playing that, I was thinking bam, 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 bam. You know, when I put in the B flat there. So again, just keep it going round in your head and just placing notes in there. And like I said, there's quite a lot of different variations in this. And you know, it's a little bit robotic and mechanical to just keep going through every variation. But as you do this more and more, it's basically the principle that you want to get into your head, you know, just the idea of just doing these variations because now we're going to be able to uh, add notes into there. It's going to be more than just playing a repetitive riff. Once you start working through a lot of notes, if you're going to be soloing, let's say, improvising things, you just need to be able to feel lots of different uh, subdivisions, okay? So just keep trying those different variations. So as I just mentioned, the ultimate aim with this is to be able to just freely improvise around the time, okay, using whatever notes, you know, in the scales or arpeggios or whatever you're playing. So uh, we need to start assigning some more notes in there rather than this repetitive phrase. So um, for this, we'll just use a C minor pentatonic scale. So that's C, third fret of the A string, E flat, sixth fret of the A string, F, third fret of the D string, G, fifth fret of the D string, B flat, third fret of the G string, and the C. And we can also go down below there, so we could put the B flat in there, sixth fret of the uh, of the E string, and the G down there, uh, third fret of the uh, E string. So, okay, so they're all the notes in that position, and we're going to use those. So. First of all, let's just try our original phrase. Okay, so we're bump, 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 bump. So through the uh, through the scale, we'd have. So I've only gone up as far as the B flat there, because that fits in nicely, and we just get to come back around, back down to the to the uh, tonic there. So with the beat. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now once we've nailed that one, we can just start adding in those little subdivisions again. So let's add, let's add some on those final two beats. Okay, so that I moved right up to the uh, right up to the octave there. But then I could add some at the end. So that was on the final hit, and now we could add uh, all of them there. So then I went all the way up to the top, up to the octave, and all the way down to the B flat below. Okay, and all these exercises are going to be written in the uh, lesson material, so you know, follow along with those. Again. Next one. So let's try that same method, but applying it to the uh, first two hits with the threes there. So with the beat. So the first one I'm going to play with the, uh, the first three hits. Uh, sorry, the first hit with the first three. So there I've gone all the way up to the C again and then down to the B flat. So now with the second three. Now let's play all uh, both hits. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So for that one, I've gone 
all the way up and then I've come all the way down to the G and then all the way back up to the E flat, okay? So again. Now, obviously, there's quite a lot of different uh, combinations of all these, and I'm not just going to keep going through all of them. But uh, one thing you can do is just try playing all of the subdivisions through the bar and then just applying that. So, uh, for that, we're going to have the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. Or you could also think of it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. Either way, it doesn't matter um, because we're not really wanting to count it. We're actually wanting to feel it. Uh, and you'll feel it if you're thinking of those accents. So, let's try a, a phrase. So we've got... Okay, so we're going to go all the way up and all the way down. Down to the G and then back. And then all the way back up to the G. So we've gone all the way up down to the G, back up to the G, and then down, okay? So up, down to the G, back up to the G, and then back, so. And when you're playing that line, you really want to feel those accents. Bah. Okay, so with the beat. One, two, three, four, five. So now let's try taking some notes out of there. And this can actually be a much more useful application because if you think about it, playing lots and lots of notes, that's all well and good. But if you're going to be making up bass lines or you're going to be improvising a solo, you don't really want it to be just there's going to be a lot of gaps in there. You want some space. And if you're going to have space in there, it can actually throw you off more because um, you're stepping back, you're letting things, you're letting things go, and uh, depending on where you want to put them, you know whether you're going to be on a, an off beat because you're not always going to be on on the beat. You know that sounds very rigid and mechanical. If you want to be actually very um, rubato and move around the time, um, you really need to step back. You need to keep that phrase in your mind. So um, that's where this comes in. So first of all, let's just try that same, same principle of moving up and down that minor pentatonic scale, but we're going to uh, take out the second note, okay? So for that, we have... So I've gone up the scale, down the scale, down to the B flat and back. So again... And I'm keeping that phrase going in my mind, and you might see it sometimes coming through in my teeth. You see my grit in my teeth together, and uh, although I don't advise that because my dentist keeps getting on at me about grating my teeth together, but um, you know, it can come out sometimes. You might be nodding your head, tapping your foot, moving around, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever way you want to express it, or you keep that phrase going, do it because you know you don't want to get lost. So with the beat. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's try taking out the second and the third beat. So that'll give us... So, 
uh, I'm going up to the B flat and then coming back down. So again, <laughs> you might see my teeth. So uh, let's try it with the beat while my teeth break. One, two, three, four, five. let's try something a little different. Let's take out the first note. So again, uh, still going through the minor pentatonic. So one, two, three, four, five, one. Okay. So um, again, I'm just feeling that pulse. And uh, we're going all the way up and then back down to the B flat. So with the uh, with the beat. One, two, three, four, five, one. And now let's just try hitting one note for the whole bar. And uh, I'll go through the different variations on this because there's obviously only going to be four of them. You can either hit the first, the second, the third, or the fourth. So um, I'll play the beat and then you'll hear how it sounds, okay? So first of all, just the first beat. That was the first beat. So now let's just hit the second. One, two, three, four, five, one. Now let's just try hitting the third. One, two, three, four, five. Bum, ba, bum. Okay, so I just went up to the G there just for the sake of time. And now let's try to hit in the fourth beat, okay? Fourth hit, sorry. <laughs> A one, two, three, four, five. Bum, ba, bum, bum. So it's a little bit trickier when you start getting into that territory, but it really, really uh, forces you to think of that phrase. You know, you, can, you can't get rid of it. And, uh, and it'll test you on how well you can keep that kind of feel going in your, in your body as you play it. So obviously the next step is, after you've practiced all those kind of rhythmic variations, just try improvising. You know, just trying to work around the, uh, work around the beat, making stuff up, you know, make up some bass lines, improvise some bass lines, solos, improvise melodies, anything like that, using that basic phrase and then just working around it with the rhythms, okay? So you wanna try taking different scales, different arpeggios, any type of me uh, melodic material and applying it to these rhythms.